A myth has perpetuated about Broom Hall in Main Street in Clackmanninshire since the 1940s, and the story of its fire has been mistakenly retold for decades. Originally named Broom Hall after the Broom on the Hill, it was built in the late 19th century for James Johnson of Elmbank Mills in Main Street. It was erected in 1874 in the baronial style, popularised by Queen Victoria's Balmoral. The mansion was designed by Stirlingshire architect Francis Mackison, and at three storeys high, its most prominent feature is its square central tower. At the time, Johnson ran the successful woollen mill with his business partner, George Drummond. The mill had been built in the 1860s, at the height of the woollen industry in the Hillfoots, but the two men went their separate ways when Drummond decided to sell his share of the business to Johnson, following a disagreement. Johnson continued the business alone until his death. He married Margaret McNabb in 1875, and they went on to have four children, who were all born at Broom Hall. Christian in 1878, James in 1880, Margaret in 1881, and Alexandrina in 1882. On Sunday, 12th January 1890, 50-year-old Johnson died at the Menchley Mansion. His wife died on 2nd August 1922, leaving a personal estate worth over £170,000. She was 76. Broom Hall remained a private residence until the 1930s. In 1931, the tenant was listed on the local valuation rolls as James Johnson, stockbroker. However, it was put up for sale in 1932. It was described as having a spacious hall, four public rooms, eight bedrooms, two dressing rooms, two bathrooms, a cloakroom and ample servants' accommodation with bathroom. There was also a butler's room, a servants' hall, good kitchen and domestic offices. Electric light and power had been installed as well as a central heating system. Outside, there was five acres of ground, with fruit and vegetable gardens, a large garage, a tennis court, stables and two lodges. It was finally sold in 1933. Less than 12 months later, it was sold again, and became a boys' day and boarding school. The Clifford Park Preparatory Boys' School was run under the auspices of William Herbert Leatham, a former member of the Northern Regiment, from which he retired in 1923, and he had a background in education. In the early hours of Friday 28th June 1940, while the boys camped out in the grounds, the building was destroyed by fire. This was despite the efforts of the boys initially, then the Alwa Fire Brigade, which arrived at 3am. The fire seemed to originate on the second floor towards the rear of the building, and the alarm was raised by local defence volunteers who were out on their nighttime patrol. It took hold quickly, and could be seen for miles around as it lit up the sky. Under the direction of Firemaster Robert Cairns, water was pumped from the county mains near the Old Menstrie Railway Station, and it was eventually brought under control sometime before 9am. By this time, a large crowd had gathered to see what had happened and offered what help they could. The climax of the fire was when the roof caved in. It was reported in the local newspapers, the Alloa Journal and the Devon Valley Tribune, 
that a shower of sparks were sent skywards, like a firework exploding, lighting up the whole area. No one was injured, but the building was completely gutted, although some furniture was saved. The cost of the damage ran into several thousand pounds, but luckily Leatham had the building insured. Meanwhile, the boys were shipped elsewhere to continue their education. A myth grew up around the fire at Broom Hall. It was said, perhaps as a propaganda ploy while World War II dragged on, that it had been deliberately set alight so it could be used as a beacon for the German Luftwaffe as a guide to the bombing of Clyde Bank. That area was the heart of not only wartime shipbuilding, but also where munitions were manufactured and there was a large oil store for the Royal Navy nearby. Due to industry and housing being in close proximity, it was inevitable civilian casualties would be high. The Clyde Bank Blitz took place on the nights of 13th and 14th March 1941, nine months after the fire at Broom Hall. Over 500 people were killed, and of the 12,000 houses, only eight survived. In addition, enemy aircraft would have been detected by the Royal Observatory Corps posts, positioned around 11 miles apart throughout the country, and any enemy plane brought down or escorted to the nearest local airfield. Following the fire, Leatham moved to Canterbury and died in East Sussex in 1980, aged 81. In 1946, and although most of it was in ruins, the proprietor of the house was Walter Alexander of Corkinseal, a metal bottle cap manufacturer. But by 1950, he'd moved on, and it belonged to Walter McAlpine Chalmers, who rented it out to radio operator William James Sillers. It was also during the 1950s that the gardener's cottage was sold to Tommy Kettles, and the stables at the mansion were converted into a house in 1977. Broom Hall was left to rot and decay for years, making it an ideal playground for local children. The darkness, the wet grass and the mud didn't deter them, and it was likened to somewhere out of a horror movie, especially during thunderstorms. A tree grew out of the top of one of the turrets. In 1986, David Burns and Bracewell Sterling Architects became involved as he wanted to transform it into a hotel. However, the following year he changed his mind and it was instead transformed into a nursing home in 1988, with some large furniture being donated to it by local families. Ten years later, in October 1998, the nursing home closed and its residents were moved elsewhere. In the summer of 1999, an application was made to Club Manager Council for a change of use to a hotel, and in 2003, it was sold for just under £500,000. In 2022, following the Covid pandemic, the business went into liquidation and it was put up for sale. Broom Hall was purchased by local businesswoman Chen Lee in late 2023. It's unclear when Broom Hall adopted the title of Castle. Many estates in Clackmannanshire incorporated it into their mansion names, such as Harveston Castle and Cowden Castle, but Johnson never used it, referring to his home only as Broom Hall. It would appear this was a later addition, coined by others in the 1980s.
If you enjoyed this episode of Scotland's History, please like, comment and subscribe. Until next time, thank you for watching.